Hey my friends, welcome back to Falcons RC, the home of the scale foam jets. And we're gonna pick up on this now on the servos. I'm gonna work on the aileron servos today. Uh, so technically last time I was already cutting a oops, a channel for it. A little packet right there so I can put the servo because right here. Normally I like to get my servos like on the center of the control surface just so it'll have more torque on it. But being that this is a complete balsa, you know, aileron and it's really relatively short really and the main thing is that I don't really have room over here on the wing to put a, a 9 gram servo so I got the most room over here closer to the to the engine mount so we're gonna put the servo right here and little short control rod and we're gonna do the same thing on this side so that's what I'm gonna be focusing on today uh, getting this wing done so let's get to it alright so I got the servos installed underneath it Got some dust on it right now. As you can see, got a servo head glue in place. The control horn. These are actually some spare wood control horns I have left from another airplane. So I just put them over here. So I got those guys right here. And I already cut my channel to feed my wires through it. This is the bottom of the wing. And these channels are so easy to cut with a Dremel. So <laughs> if you can get your hands on one of these tools, you know. It, they help out a lot. I mean, you, you can get a bunch of different bits for them. Uh, over here I got some sanding pads, some cutting wheels, you know, some polishing stuff. I mean, all kinds of blade, blades you can get for this thing. Uh, I like this is like my favorite blade right here because it cuts, you know, with the tip and also with the size. So it's pretty neat. So to do these channels, you know, you just turn it on and run, run it through it and it'll cut it right up. So this is awesome. So all right, I'm gonna go ahead and put all my stuff on, on those channels and we're gonna flip it over. Okay, so all the wiring is done for the wing itself. We got the servos in place and we went ahead and glue the piece of foam in place on both sides. I still gotta finish it, setting it and everything, but at least got the speed controllers right here. So they're gonna get plenty of air under the wing. And with the top over here, this is inside the fuselage, and we got the motors, wires, and the other ones. I just put them in a white harness, that will just make it more simple. And of course, my power lead. And over here, I'm working on the, <clears throat> on the elevator servos right here. And this took me a little bit to, to make up my mind how I was gonna do it. Now, I was gonna put them, I was gonna take these elevators, the servos, you know, because I'm, I'm going to use two. I'm going to have to use two. I would like to use one, but the way the tail is shaped, it will work better with two. So I was going to put one right here and the other one, I guess, right here, you know, like that. In that way, they were going to be hidden inside the vertical stabilizer. The problem with this is that, as you can see, the angle, the the push rod will be pulling over here will make it a little bit more difficult for the servo to to actually create a full deflection because the, this push rod it will be like sideways like that and it don't matter really if I put my control horn the same direction you know like if I was to pull my control horn let's say I got this one over here so if I put my control horn like this and going that way because of the angle this thing is on, it will really create a lot of stress on that servo. You really want your, your, your push rod to be on a 90 degrees with your servo. In that way, the control surface, you know, with, with your hinge point, you want this a uh, complete 90. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this servo right here and this other one right next to it, like that. You know, they're gonna be sitting under, under the elevator, but it's gonna be better for my control surface. In that way, my pull is on a full 90 degrees. So, and I'm pushing it really the way, you see that my control horn is pretty close to the edge of my control surface, but because it's a solid piece of wood, it'll be okay. There, there should be no flex on it. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and install this, and then we're gonna test it. All right, so here we got both elevators installed. Uh, as you can see, I end up going to 
the very first hole on the control horn. It's actually pretty good because the closer you, your push rod is to the servo control horn, the more torque you're going to get out of the servo. The farther away you put it on the holes coming up, the less torque you're going to get out of it. So that, that, that worked out pretty good. And I, it gives me plenty of movement. Also, as you can see to my, my push rod is lined up right there on the hinge point. That's where it comes in. That gives you an even throw to up and down. So you gotta look for that too when you are installing your your horn your oh my goodness your your, your horn right here. You gotta line it up on your on your hinge point. So yeah, right here and of course you know we got a servo tester which makes this so much easier so you don't have to have your radio with you all the time and a night cat. And right now they're actually gonna work opposite of each other because the way they are sitting over here, but they're gonna be going to a different channel on my radio so I can program them. So I'm gonna work them. See. As you can see that's that's plenty of movement. Plenty. That's plenty of movement. So that's to, to control the manual. Center and this center. Okay, so that's neutral. So as you can see, this is ready to install on the air pump itself and we won't see the servos on the top and we're barely gonna see them on the bottom right there. Uh, these servos right here, I, I just use CA, use regular CA and the kicker to install them to the wood right here. And then whenever I install this tail, into the vertical stabilizer. I'm gonna put hot glue, of course, on all of all this, and probably put on some on the front and on the rear of the servos. So, alrighty, let's get this installed. All right, so I got the tail installed on the airplane now. And as you can see, you cannot see the servos from the top, but they are on the bottom, of course. And they don't look as bad as I was thinking they were gonna look. They actually look clean pretty clean and I ran both of the wires through this, oops, through this side over here and push them in through there flush with the on the vertical stabilizer okay and also I already went ahead and put this piece of foam over here to, to mount my receiver and my battery uh, <clears throat> the receiver is probably going to stay on the wing. I'm not quite sure yet, but I think that's where it's going to stay. Uh, my battery is probably going to be all the way on the front to get my CG right. Because there is a bunch of weight right now at the back with the motors and the tail on. Uh, also went ahead and fixed the canards on place. Uh, at the moment, I fix them with a... There's two degrees of positive incident. So technically like an up pitch on the nose about two degrees or so. <clears throat> I also went ahead and attached these nuts because I'm going to make my wings removable. So you see that one is plus, a plastic nut and I just put a bunch of hot glue around it and of course there is another one on this side already too. So when I mount my wing on place I can just bolt it down. So okay I'm going to go ahead and put the wing on place and I'm going to uh, install the receiver and we're gonna see how everything works okay so I got the piece of foam that needed to be glued on the bottom I went ahead and put it on there and I got some tape right now holding it to while it dries and I installed the receiver uh, I really wanted to use my FR Sky radio but I didn't really have a receiver <laughs> a standard receiver available but I do have one of them orange receivers for Spectrum, so I'm just gonna use the DX9. And I got it ready set up. Uh, over here, we're gonna, well, hey, well, it's hard to put it on the ground and do it. So, you know, we got elevators, of course. So we got two inserts on the elevators. We got the other ones. I reduced my throws actually on these suckers to only 50% because it had way too much throw, so that 50% is more than enough. That, that should be plenty of throw, really. Same thing on the elevator. 
so that should be good. And since I don't have no actual uh, rudder on it, I mix in some differential thrust. So if I wanna, if I need to do a little bit of trimming to the left on the yaw, you know, we got my right motor spanning. And if I need to go to the right, you know, my left motor spins up. And that is, of course, over here on my rudder, rudder stick. <laughs> so I'm gonna go left, that one pulls up, right, that one pulls up. The reason you see I'm free spinning and stuff is because the props are actually free. I didn't tie them all the way down because I'm just doing a test over here. So they are free spinning. So throttle up. You know, go left. The right one pulls up. Left one slows down. Back to neutral. So that is only in case I need some trim on the throttle itself, you know, because uh, one of the hard things to get properly done on the when you have twin airplanes you know with twin motors uh, is to get the speed controllers calibrated properly now in this case I'm using the one speed controllers I'm normally using my quads and they are actually very good when it comes to calibrating to the same frequency so those should be dead on really but I, I mix it over here so I can trim it actually on my trim on my yacht trim just in case I need to but okay let me show you in here real quick um, Inside here, uh, right now, for the moment, I have a receiver pack, uh, which I'm not gonna be flying with this. I'm just gonna install a regular BC and plug it into a spare channel right here. And I have a 2200 milliamps for sale on the front. I really wanna fly with a 1500, so we'll see how the CG works out. Uh, I believe the CG on this thing is supposed to be like very close to the leading edge, so we'll play with that a little bit i'm gonna do some more research about it about the full scale and see what the cg is on it since this aircraft is a true scale of it i didn't make the wings any bigger than scale neither the canards of the elevator you know everything is with a true scale of the actual aircraft so my cg should be around the same place so anyway the receiver is going to stay on the wing it's going to be easier to keep it on the wing and just unplug these two wires for the elevators and just keep it there and again my receive my battery is going to be hopefully at 1500 and on the same place where that 22 is so we got plenty of extra wires you can see <laughs> so anyhow that's it for today the next video hopefully is going to be with this puppy on the air so Thank you for watching, subscribe, see you next fly.